Welcome back to my channel. My name is Tamara. Today we're going to go through the steps to construct a beautiful doll size sweater upcycled from a human sweater. You may even have the fabric in your possession in your home right now, or maybe it's a sweater that you haven't worn in a while and hadn't seen its potential. If you follow me through these quick steps, I'll show you how to turn something old into something new for your favorite fashion doll. So let's get started. So as we get started today with making a super easy sweater for Elowen or a similar size 16 inch fashion dolls, I just want to draw your attention to how simple it is to make if you use a really specific type of sweater. So here we have our Elowen and she is puff piece. I think she's absolutely beautiful. She is actually from the virtual doll convention and I'll leave a link to that to, uh, in the description below so that if you're interested in seeing the new Elowens that were recently released, not in this batch, but the next batch, um, you can go ahead and find them through the virtual doll convention and Rachel Hoffman. So this is actually a sweater that I picked up um, just from a store. It was on clearance. And so I love the sweater. The color is beautiful, but it actually is too big for me. So I'm not going to use it. But when you're trying to pick a sweater to use to make doll clothes, I recommend something with a really, really tight weave. That's one thing that's really good. And when you're using a pattern that doesn't require you to hem the edge of the sweater or the edge of the sleeves, that's even faster. So in this case, if you look really closely at this, it's a really tiny weave and it ends with a really, really nice edge. So I have a couple of choices with this. You'll notice the neckline also has a little bit more detail at the neck. So I could use that as the end, end of the sleeves if I wanted to. But in this case, just for simplicity, I think I'll just use the base of this sweater. Now you can get a lot of doll sweaters out of one human sweater because you have the option here on the sleeves as well. Uh, the neckline, as I already stated, and the hemline. This hemline is only going to need to take the hem of the actual bodice as well as the hem of the sleeves. And then you have some choices with the actual collar. And as we get a little bit further in the construction, I'll show you what that is. If you're interested in making this pattern for one of your dolls, it is a free PDF download from our website and I'll leave a link in the description below. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to cut up the side seam of this sweater. Um, that's just so I have a nice flat area to uh, work with when I'm laying out my pattern pieces. There we go. So the next, once I have it open, I'm actually going to just use uh, enough width in the sweater uh, folded over that I can get the uh, side back section and also the sleeve onto that cut edge or the uncut edge, I mean, of the actual sweater. So to show you how much actual material you're going to need, it's going to line up directly like that. So now remember, since we don't have to hem the sleeve, this is already taking into account the arm length of Elowen. And in this case, I'm cutting this sleeve at five and a quarter inches from the uh, top of the sleeve to the actual arm. And so I'm just going to lay those pieces on. And then with the third piece, I'm going to place it right here. Now that we have our pattern, our base portion of the pattern pinned to the actual sweater, I just wanted to kind of give you an idea of how big this uh, uh, piece of sweater is. So I do have it folded over for these first two pieces, but it measures about 10 and a quarter inches plus six. So I would say this is about 17 inches long. And then in um, the actual height, it's about five and a half inches. So you're gonna need approximately that amount of sweater material uh, plus some additional uh, material for the actual collar. So let's go ahead and get the pieces cut out. And then I'll show you what the next step is to get this sweater constructed in literally just minutes. All right, so once we have our pieces cut out, what we wanna do is make sure that we're paying attention to how much fray is happening at that um, actual sweater. So what you can do at this stage is you can put some fray check along the raw edges of the sweater if you feel like that's something you should do at this step. So the next step is gonna to be to just take the sweater and place it right sides together. And we're actually gonna take it over to the sewing machine and sew that actual shoulder seam. So we're gonna sew the shoulder seam. And remember when you're sewing stretch fabric and knits, you wanna make sure you change that needle to a ballpoint needle just to help with that actual sewing adventure. So let's go ahead and sew those shoulder seams and move on to the next step. 
Now, if you follow my channel, you know that this is a relatively new sewing machine for me. So there are certain things about it that are different than my old machine and I'm still getting used to it. Um, one of the things is I have trouble sometimes getting uh, stretch material started without it going into the actual feed dogs. A trick that I found that's super easy is just to take a little tiny piece of paper, which in this case is just regular uh, letter size paper and cut a little piece of it and actually start your seam with the paper supporting the fabric so that it doesn't go into the feed dogs of your machine. So let me show you really quick how easy this is. So you can see I had no trouble making that seam, no trouble getting it started. And when you turn it over, all you do is have to just peel the paper away. And it just takes a second, but it really uh, cuts down on my frustration of trying to create the seams on stretching material. So if this is something you haven't tried, then I recommend that you do try it um, with stretch knits and even for this uh, actual sweater pattern. So from there, let's go on to the next step, which is gonna be to put the sleeves into the armhole edge. Because this uh, particular type of sweater knit does have a little bit of cotton to it, I am gonna press those seams open and then get those uh, sleeves sewn in. So for the next step, we're gonna take our sleeves and make sure we're pinning it to the actual sweater right sides together into the armhole edge. So we're actually just gonna go right up into here and all the way around to the other side. So let me get that pinned and then we'll sew the sleeves in place. And we have about three more steps and we're actually gonna be finished with the construction of the actual sweater. Now we're gonna take that same tip and technique about using a piece of paper to get this started, and we're gonna get these sleeves sewn into place. All right, so we have one sleeve in, and as you can see, I started it with that piece of paper, but it looks pretty good. So we're gonna just peel that paper back and we're gonna get the second sleeve set in. All right, so we're making really great progress. So as you can see so far, we have just a couple of steps left and we're actually gonna be finished. So the next step is gonna to be to sew the underarm and side seam of the sweater with right sides together. All right, now that we have those side seams sewn, we're gonna do the same thing where we make a decision to either put a little fray check along the edges or to actually do um, the pinking shears on the seam. Next, we're actually just gonna turn the sweater right side out and then we're gonna decide what type of collar we want. Referring back to our original doll, we're gonna see how we want that collar to actually finish. So I just wanna try it to her neck to see how high I want the collar to sit under her chin. And I think that actually looks pretty good. That looks to be about, let's see, 
that looks to be about a three quarter inch um, height. So I'm going to times that by two, which makes that um, one and a half. And then I'm going to add a quarter inch to actually take into account the seam allowance. So let me mark that off with my heat erasable marker and we'll get the collar piece cut and we'll get it attached to the actual sweater. All right, now that we have that collar piece cut, here it is. It's obviously much longer than it needs to be, but I wanna pull it as I'm going across, so I'm not actually gonna pin it together. You may choose to start it with a pin, but in order to make it fit nicely to your neck, you do wanna just give a gentle tug to the actual collar piece so that it doesn't stick away from her neck once you have it fitted to her. So let me go ahead and get started with that little piece of paper underneath just to make sure I'm doing well, and we'll see how it turns out. did decide to just do a little top stitch around the actual collar, just to give it a little bit more detail. And now we'll move on to the step where we actually decide how to close the back. So here's a quick fit to our Elowen doll and how the sweater's coming together so far. So the most important thing really in finishing the sweater is to determine if you want this collar to be laying down or if you actually want it to be um, up like a high turtleneck collar, which actually that looks cuter than I thought it was. So I think I might actually finish the look like this. The reason you want to know in advance is when you do the actual back closing, you want to make sure that collar is either folded down or actually pressed up based on how you want it to close. Now, normally when I do a sweater like this, there's a couple different ways to finish it. You can zigzag along the raw edge just to prevent it from fraying. You could add a little uh, interface stabilizer, or in some cases you can even just add snaps. So this is a different sweater that I did, maybe for the RTB 101 body doll. It's all constructed in the exact same way, utilizing that same finished edge as we did in this whole tutorial. But in this case, I just turned it back and added snaps. Now. I don't think it's terrible with snaps, but if your sweater is a little bit tight, then it's gonna pull at the snap. So I wanna do it differently today and actually try to utilize a little bit of um, Velcro that my mom gave me. So this is the Velcro, it's super tiny. Um, I believe it's quarter inch. And I just cut a couple of pieces and I'm gonna apply it to the one side and then I'm gonna fold that side under, apply it to the other side and sew the center back seam up to where that Velcro meets. And we'll see how that does as a finish on this actual sweater. And then we're gonna sew the center back seam and get that final fit to Elowen and see how it has turned out. Let's get that sweater turned right side out and see how the final fit works for our Elowen and get some final pictures. As you can see, the Velcro at the top really makes a nice smooth closing. And you can always hand catch that so that you make sure you maintain that nice finished edge.
Our sweater is complete and I believe Elowen Wild is completely satisfied. I hope you found this information to be helpful and that it encouraged you to give it a try for yourself. Remember to look for the link in the description below to that free PDF download. And I really hope you appreciated that tip of how to use just a small piece of paper to get your stitches started and avoid those feed dogs eating your fabric. That has been a challenge of mine in the past and I'm super glad to have figured out a solution to get past it. If you may have noticed on the channel lately, I've put in a few uh, sales videos and a few informational videos about actually selling your products. I've decided not to have the second channel of the Sewing Profit, to put, but to put all the information here in one convenient place. Feel free to skip the videos that include those sales tips if they're not of interest to you. If you want to continue to see great sewing tutorials, keep checking back, hit that notification bell and the subscribe button, and I hope to see you guys in the next video.